Steve, the big problem in the search for extraterrestrial life is that very simple question. If there are so many and it's so, the universe is so populated with uh, intelligent life forms, why is there no evidence? Well, why is there no evidence for extraterrestrial life is what's known as the Fermi paradox, which goes back to the 1950s when the famous physicist Enrico Fermi was at, at lunch with some colleagues and just said, all right, if there's extraterrestrials out there, where are they? Uh, and uh, there are many answers to that question. Uh, I think you can put them in three or four categories. Uh, one of those is that, uh, one of the categories is that they are here. Uh, and that's the UFO uh, problem. Uh, a second category is that uh, they are out there, but they don't communicate or they don't travel. Uh, so uh, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't know about them. And the third uh, solution is that, uh, that they don't exist. So it's that middle category that's the interesting part. Yeah, most people reject the UFO first category and the third category is so, sort of self-explaining. So the second category is really what we have to try to understand. So. That's right. I would certainly myself reject the first category. I don't think they're, while you have to keep an open mind about are they here, uh, I just don't see the evidence. And it, it really comes down to what is the evidence. So that first category I would reject. Um, the, the second category has many interesting uh, uh, solutions. Uh, maybe they are out there, but uh, they don't like to travel. Uh, <laughs> maybe they are out there, uh, but they have a policy uh, of uh, not interrupting embryonic young civilizations such as ours. That's what's known as the zoo hypothesis. Maybe they're <laughs> waiting out there at the edge of the solar system somewhere until we uh, develop better. and and uh, can come up with a more uh, peaceful uh, world. One of the interesting parts of the debate is right. that if you do kind of a numerical calculation and make any assumption you want that how long it takes a civilization to develop, right. uh, a few thousand years, and then uh, how long it takes technology based on Earth standards, right. with some very little calculations, you can determine that in a few hundred thousand years that any reasonable civilization would populate the galaxy if they have any sort of a, a, of a curiosity or an outward motivation that we think li is, is endemic to life. Mm -hmm. so, so the numbers sort of suggest that they, there should be a lot of evidence and there's none. Yeah, the Fermi paradox really took off in the 1970s, late 1970s and 1980s when Frank Tipler uh, did some calculations and also Michael Hart was, was one of these people, uh, an astronomer. Uh, and the calculations are quite simple but dramatic in their effect. Uh, and the calculation shows that if you have civilizations out there and you travel e even a fraction of the speed of light, like a tenth of the speed of light, uh, it won't take more than a few million years to populate the galaxy. Uh, so uh, given that, if all those extraterrestrials are out there, where are they? They're not here. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, Tipler and Hart believed that SETI programs, all search for extraterrestrial intelligence programs, were a waste of money, a waste of taxpayers' money, because they'd proven QED <laughs> that there are no extraterrestrials out there. Uh, but there are many solutions to the Fermi paradox, and I think uh, that it does, uh, however, need to be taken seriously. And I think that the SETI proponents did take it seriously in the 1980s by coming back with a, a variety of arguments, and it's still taken seriously today. But the bottom line is that, that you should not a priori, uh, based on a priori arguments, discount extraterrestrials. Uh, the bottom line is that you need to look and see if they're there, not uh, go based on uh, a priori arguments. Nor should those a priori arguments assume that just because we've found extrasolar planets that they are definitely there. Some people do that. And it's really an open issue. Exactly. We know some 200 extrasolar planets now, but those are all gas giants. We don't know for a fact that the terrestrial type planets exist. We think that they do. They're just not within the range of detection yet. Uh, but you certainly do need, uh, need planets uh, for life. But then there are many other uh, parameters, and this gets back to what's called the Drake Equation, where you line up all these parameters that you need. Not only do you need the planets, you need planets which are uh, having the proper conditions for life. Uh, you need to have the, uh, the development of intelligence. You need to have uh, in civilizations which have uh, long lifetimes if you're going to have uh, any communication with them. Uh, so this is what's known as the Drake Equation. And again, showing the very subjective nature of that equation, uh, 
people come up with estimates based uh, uh, which range from a million civilizations in our own galaxy to one. Yeah. I always say that you have to be careful you prove that we don't exist here. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's still certainly a wide open question. Uh, but I do think that we were making some progress with the uh, in those parameters in the Drake, Drake equation, uh, with the um, certainly with the detection of the extrasolar planets now. But we have a long way to go. Let's go to the end of the search, whenever that may be. And seems to me there are only two kinds of conclusions. One is that there is extraterrestrial intelligent life, and the other that there isn't. I want to explore each one. Now, I think there could be life without intelligent life, but let's put that one aside. Let's look for e extraterrestrial intelligent life, something like we would define it. So we have two possibilities. It's, it is someplace else or it's not. What are the implications for humanity, for our own self-awareness in the universe, for either one of those possibilities? Well, if we are not alone, uh, it has uh, many implications, probably more implications than if we, if we are alone. Because if we are not alone, we have to interact with those extraterrestrials. We have to rethink our entire philosophy and theology, I would say, uh, in particular uh, Christian theology because of problems like the Incarnation and that sort of thing. Uh, and um, uh, the... Uh, problem of human destiny is really determined by which of those two possibilities exist in actuality. If uh, we are alone, then we can move out into the solar system, into the cosmos, and uh, basically shape the cosmos to our own wills, our own wishes. Uh, but uh, if there are extraterrestrials out there, it's not quite so easy. We'll, we'll have to interact with them. Now, they're probably... Um, uh, you know, this goes to the question of communication by uh, radio signals uh, versus uh, actual physical contact. Those are two very different scenarios. And when you talk about implications, you really, it's not a monolithic problem. You really have to break down what the scenarios would be. Uh, if you have radio communication with uh, extraterrestrials, it's likely that there would be tens or hundreds or thousands of light years away. That's a long way. I mean, if you travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. <laughs> Which is impossible. <laughs> well, that would be like going seven and a half times around the Earth in one second. And the extraterrestrials are, you know, a thousand light years away. It would take you a thousand years to get there. Mm -hmm. Or a thousand years to get a message there, and another thousand years to get a message back. Um, so uh, that, uh, that uh, certainly is uh, problematic from that point of view. What about the debate of uh, the wisdom of sending messages uh, into the uh, solar, into, into the cosmos? Because uh, maybe somebody who will hear it will not be so friendly. Well, the argument that uh, we sh we should really be quiet uh, and not <laughs> reveal ourselves uh, has certainly been made throughout the extraterrestrial life debate, even by some well-known astronomers, uh, Sir Martin Ryle, uh, uh, at Cambridge, a uh, Nobel Prize winner, uh, said that uh, we really need to be careful because uh, if the extraterrestrials are out there, we don't know, um, you know, uh, what they will be like. Maybe they'll come to get us or something <laughs> like that. Uh, and I remember in reaction to that, there was a, uh, an editorial in the New York Times. It said, should mankind hide? Uh, and the fact is that we can't hide for several reasons. One is that the radio signals, uh, the leakage is already going out there. Uh, since uh, you know, more than a century now, since uh, we've been emanating radio waves. As somebody put it, I Love Lucy is 50 years, uh, 50 light years uh, out, in, out in the... Well, it uh, might be problematic <laughs> to, uh, to break down the actual signals to see what, uh, what uh, was said, but it would be evident that it was, uh, it was a natural signal. So uh, that would certainly be evidence uh, that, uh, that we exist. But aside from that, um, I do think that we need to be careful if we do what's called active SETI. I mean, it's one thing to listen, but it's another thing to send a purposeful signal uh, because, uh, first of all, you have to ask, well, who speaks for Earth? Uh, you know, it's one thing if astronomers send a message out there or should a government, particular government, send a message out or should it be the United Nations? And, um, uh, of course, there, there have been uh, some messages sent out on a small scale, that both the Pioneer uh, spacecraft, the plaque was put on the spacecraft, and the Voyager record. Uh, those were messages that were sent out to the solar system. In the case of uh, Voyager, they're now out at the edge of the solar system. And I think it'll take something at the speed that they're going, it would take something like 80,000 years to reach the nearest star, Alpha Centauri. 
Uh, but uh, you know, 80,000 years is short in the, in the, the uh, lifetime of the universe. So it's possible that those things will be intercepted, will reveal that uh, we are, are here, and uh, then we'll have to deal with the consequences then. <laughs> well, not us, but our, our long-term progeny. <laughs>